Hello, my name is Edwin Jones, and I'm a minister with the Lenore City Church of Christ. My co-worker and co-minister, Jesse Nelson, is under the weather right now, and we'll be resuming our Bible readings first part of next week. So I wanted to come in with a, what will be a three-lesson series that is titled The Image of Jesus, How Discipleship uh, is about being transformed into the image of Jesus. There's a lot of talk these days about discipleship, and I'm glad of that. Our lesson is actually drawn from something that I think hopefully stimulates that thinking and talking, and it comes from Matthew 28, 18 through 20. The Great Commission is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. There we see that when Jesus gives this, he first says that he has all authority in heaven and on earth. He has all the authority that God has given him. He's put everything under him, we find out in 1 Corinthians 15, except the Father himself. Now, he, for a, the longest time, I thought that the command was go. I have realized, and I started realizing this when I taught Greek, that uh, the command is make disciples. There are three participles in association with that. And they have to do with going, or as you are going, uh, you are to uh, make disciples, and uh, you're to baptize them, which presupposes that you're preaching the gospel about Jesus, because that's the response that happens when people ask what they need to do to be saved. Check out Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 38 on that first gospel sermon. And so, baptizing them into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, a relationship is established. But then, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever Jesus has commanded. And he says he's going to be with the apostles and uh, by extension with the church until the end of the age, the end of the world. So make disciples. What are we talking about? Well, it's fairly obvious if we go to Acts chapter 2 that we just mentioned when that first sermon is preached that when people hear about Jesus, they come to realize that he is in fact the Messiah with convicting proofs and uh, we also have the Holy Spirit manifestation there as uh, had been predicted and that Peter uh, talks about from Joel. So what happens when people are convicted? They're pierced in their heart and they ask, what do we need to do? Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Simon Peter tells them they're to repent and be baptized, every one of them, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins, and, and they will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is to them, they're to their children, all those who are far off, as many as the Lord your God will call. So the, the Great Commission has started there. Earlier, Jesus told them in Acts chapter 1 that it would start in Jerusalem, it would go to Judea, it would go to Samaria, and then it would go into the uppermost parts of the world. And we're seeing that starting here. But what happens right after that? If we look at verses 41 and 42, of Acts 2, we find out that those who receive the word, so they have to receive that sermon that was preached about Jesus, his identity, they're going to do what Simon Peter said that they needed to do. They're going to be baptized. And so those who received the word were baptized, and 3,000 were added to the number that very day. And what do they start doing? They devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine. Sometimes I fear uh, we have a, a Great Commission emphasis that is on baptism. And baptism is a consequence of what one is going to do to be entered into a relationship with the Father, Son, and the Spirit once they conclude that Jesus is the Messiah and they want to be a disciple, a follower, one who will become like their master, their Lord, in this case, of course, being Jesus. And so we find them immediately giving themselves over to that. Now, they really took that seriously because in, uh, uh, as we go further along in Acts and we get to chapter 8, we find out that persecution is going. Saul, who we'll later know as Paul, is behind this in many respects. And people are scattered abroad. Now, the apostles aren't. They stay in Jerusalem, but the rest of the church is scattered abroad. Now consider this, the timeline from Acts 2 to Acts 8 is no more than two years. So the oldest Christians that we're talking about being scattered abroad are no older than two years old in the faith. But notice what they do. They go everywhere preaching the word. So 
they really took this discipleship thing seriously. In fact, one of the things that explains why people were selling their land and helping brethren who needed money there in Acts chapter 2 is it was a phenomenal situation because it had never happened uh, before like that. But it's the first gospel sermon. It wouldn't happen again. People are there for the Passover feast. They weren't planning to stay longer than that, and then they go back home. Now they have become disciples of Jesus, and they need to know what that means. So when they go back home, they can take this message of Jesus to those around about them, and they can be disciples, making other disciples. Again, the Great Commission, make disciples. So within a, a two-year period of time, as the folks who are still in Jerusalem are scattered abroad, they go everywhere preaching the word without the apostles with them. I think that's just absolutely remarkable, but it shows how significant discipleship was in the early church, the earliest it was, and how important brethren who received the word and were baptized felt like it was. They uh, devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine. In Mark chapter 8 and verse 34 and 35, Jesus had uh, talked about the principle behind that. He talks about it actually in all four of the Gospels. He said he summons the crowd and his disciples, and he said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake in the Gospels, he will find it. So part of coming to Jesus is getting rid of self so that we can replace that as disciples with Jesus. So we lose our life for his sake and the sake of the gospel. It's exactly what we see people doing in Acts chapter 2, verse 41 and 42. It's exactly what accounts for their going everywhere preaching the word within a couple of years of that. So the principles were there in Jesus' ministry, and, and now they're coming into play in the Great Commission in Matthew uh, explicitly says, make disciples. Now, uh, if we go to John chapter 15, there Jesus has another thing that talks about the principles of what we're talking about in this discipleship, which is really talking about Christ likeness. The emphasis that Jesus puts on this is the emphasis that the church needs to put on this. Christ is the head of all things to the church. So as he thinks, we should think. Notice what he taught in John chapter 15. In the middle of the last conversation he had with the apostles before he's arrested, very important things. Uh, consider verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone wishes to abide in me, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. They gather him and cast him into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and thus prove to be my disciples. So we see this principle of discipleship, that it has to do with getting rid of ourselves so that we can be like Jesus. One of the things we'll have in our upcoming lesson is found in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 to show what it looks like and uh, show what was going on with these people who devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine after they crucified themselves and were learning a, a new identity, if you will. I've been crucified with Christ, Paul says. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that's what we're talking about. When we're talking about the Great Commission, it is not a commission primarily to baptize. That is a consequence of people who believe that Jesus is the Messiah. They want to follow him, and they want to be his disciple. They have to get into a relationship, which involves the forgiveness of sins, but into a relationship in this new kingdom, in this new family with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so they're baptized into that relationship, and then they're to learn whatsoever things Jesus has commanded, whatever he's taught, and he'll be with folks until the end who pursue that. So, again, we're talking about transformation into the image of Christ. We're talking about discipleship and its importance. We will look in a couple of further lessons. We plan to have two more 
at just exactly how this is emphasized throughout the New Testament. It's everywhere, and it needs to be everywhere in our Christianity. And also have a look at kind of what it looks like in our last lesson. So thank you for tuning in. Share this with your friends because I think this is important to make sure we understand what Jesus is commissioning and how we are to follow that, how we're to lose ourselves, how we're to find ourselves in him and be transformed into his image. Thank you for watching.